When you have a solution to a certain problem and you want to put it on the market, there's a very important question you have to ask yourself. Who else is doing this and who am I up against? Now, entrepreneurs see competition often as a bad thing, but that's not necessarily the case. You could actually see it as a piece of validation that somehow you're doing something quite interesting because others decided to compete with you. It also creates awareness for your solution because when customers buy new products or services, they tend to do a little bit of research and compare different offerings from different companies. You might get noticed that way. And don't forget, competition creates opportunities too. When you can find out about the shortcomings of your competition, you're poised to gain market traction if you can fill those gaps. Now, very often you'll think about your solution being so unique that nothing comes even close to it, that you're a guaranteed winner. Well, let me disappoint you. You might end up becoming a winner, but you always face competition. Now, that's because you very often only think about direct competition, which are companies doing similar things, but you also have indirect competition. Now, to find out about your indirect competition, ask yourself the following question. How are my customers solving their problem at the moment? When you're building a software for to-do lists, for example, you're still competing indirectly to regular post-it notes and pen and paper. You're actually competing against all else too because a customer can spend his or her money only on one thing. If it's spent on your products or services, that prevents that customer from spending it anywhere else. So your value proposition needs to be compelling enough for your customers to justify spending money on. Now, when you research competition, think about your unique value proposition. How are you different from your competitors? And how is your competition different from you? When you're building services or products for different types of users, you can approach this from different perspectives. Think, for example, about an app that you can use with your friends at a bar to split all the expenses. You scan a QR code and each of your accounts are debited accordingly. Well, you could approach this solution from the value it creates for you and your friends, but you can also approach the solution for the value it creates for the employees at the bar. Either way, your solution needs to be compelling enough for both sides to be used, but your approach might differ from your competition. Now, consider different market segments as well. You could have two companies offering the exact same products and services, but they're not necessarily sharing the same customer base. Think, for example, about a recruitment agency targeting young potentials and one that is targeting people that are unemployed aged 50 years and older. Both of those businesses are perfectly capable of operating without having to worry too much about competing with each other. Now, be aware that new competition can surface at any point in time and existing competition can change their value proposition as well as their customer segments. So you want to keep a good eye out on your competition landscape and make sure that you keep delivering unique value proposition.